All right, welcome back. So one of the things we're doing in terms of CR Live is the new format here is we're going to be doing um, sometimes two content segments, about seven minutes each. So they're quite a bit shorter than they were before, about half the length, but we're going to make sure there are guests, um, you know, get to the point of the issues, um, save the banter, make sure you guys have hard hitting, hard hitting information, or we're going to combine the two segments into one that's a little bit longer. So kind of like 10 to 12 to 15 minutes. I guess I could have said 10 to 15 minutes. And this is an example of one of those. So today I want to talk about the five levels of customer service, making your business and life easy. And I want to give you some real quick background on this. Um, when I finished selling real estate, um, I had a real estate team running and I, I started facilitating the team full time. And then I started teaching and, and developing customer service training concepts and courses for independent business professionals, accountants, lawyers, realtors, mortgage brokers, people like that, insurance brokers. Um, and we started developing customer service courses around that. And we learned some, some serious things, but I, I want to share a story really quickly about my real estate business that has impacted my life in unimaginable ways. And I know that if you, if you pay attention to what we're going to talk about today, this can impact your life in unimaginable ways as well. Um, I was doing a transaction and, um, I was doing a deal with a, a lady named Ann Clark. She was a realtor on the other side. I was essentially 21. She was with, um, CIR. So, uh, we did the deal. I had a, a renovation client who had done a rental on a house. Um, and then the client bought it before it was completely done. So I'm representing the seller, the buyer moved in and my client had done some stuff that wasn't that great. Um, the plumbing under the sink, he used the wrong style, uh, fittings and put silicone in, in order to try to fill up the gap, which is a huge no, no, you're supposed to use the right fitting pipes. Um, also, uh, he ran out of a certain grout color. So he used a different color caulking that didn't match the grout and the, um, the coloring in a couple different colors around the sink, which looked horribly. And there was a couple other basic things. So when Anne brought her client in, she was like, Lindsay, this is not what we expected. Um, I wanted to make sure that everyone had a good experience. So I said, you know what, Anne, don't worry about it. I don't want to, uh, you to fix it. I don't want anything else. I didn't want to bother my client. It was, there was a money guy and an investor guy. And I said, we're going to fix it. So I paid about, I think it was about between six and $800. I had a handyman come in, fix the grout, fix the sink, uh, fix a couple other basic things and made it right for Anne and her client and made it right for my clients to make it easy and just did the repairs and that was it. Then I started teaching the customer service training class and became the marketing manager at CIR and remembered that transaction we did. So she came and attended my customer service training class. Then Anne said to me, Hey, Lindsay, um, I've talked to Ron and Ray Stater. We want you to come over and teach the training programs at CIR. And would you consider sitting down and talking to them? Lo and behold, eventually I said yes. And here we are. And that's literally how it went. And the only reason I had an opportunity to come to CIR to teach the training programs is because of that transaction we did. And Anne said to me, she said, the way you handled that transaction, I knew that there was something good about customer service there and that you had something to offer. And I wanted to learn more about it. And then it, it impacted my life in, in a massive, massive way to have the opportunity to work with all of you guys. So that was just sort of an idea on this. Now I want to take you through and we studied and we looked at, you know, the way the real estate transactions were done, the interaction with the clients, the way transactions were done overall in other industries as well. And the different levels of service that are out there. What, why were people in love with certain brands and not in love with other brands? So, um, we want to talk today about the five levels of customer service. Addy, if you can come over and show my screen. Let's take you through these. So when we talk about the first level of customer service, uh, the first level is what we call unacceptable. So you guys have all seen this in other realtors and you guys have had this interaction in stores, retail stores, anywhere else where, you know, there's, there's lack of knowledge and integrity, uh, a lack of, um, uh, honesty. Um, they don't know very much about the protocol that you feel like there's very little, if any value, they just leave the client to themselves. Um, and there's no education for the client. And even the professional themselves seems pretty uneducated about everything that's going on. Um, typically when clients get this level of customer service, uh, what the clients say is they have a story about a bad experience, which isn't good. And, and often we see realtors get into the industry being like, you know, I just want to do a better job than my realtor did for me. And this is unacceptable levels of customer service. The next level of customer service that we talk about is what I consider ordinary. So if you were to envision 
what you expect from the typical realtor, the typical insurance person, the typical accountant, what is the base level of basic services you expect where you're like, yeah, okay, that's what I was expecting. Um, they're honest, but you know what? They may find themselves also in conflicts of interest now and then because, you know, something seems to be wrong with the home inspection, but they really need a paycheck. So they, they might try to whitewash it a little bit or try to, uh, you know, not manipulate things because they're not misrepresenting the person, but you know, they, they're, they're, they're always struggling to kind of get those long-term consistent clients. It's sort of what you think of as a typical realtor at events, hucking up business cards, things like that. There's some education that they do, mandatory courses, but they don't go beyond that. Um, they're likely extremely busy and just running around. They're married to their business. They have no systems in place and they have a short-term perspective on clients. That's sort of ordinary. Think about like the typical, very average person that you get to. Now, most people aspire to be beyond ordinary and they get to this level of outstanding. And outstanding is this person has, oh, back to ordinary for a second. What clients um, say about someone that has ordinary level of customer service, if I did a transaction again, I'd consider calling Susan or, you know, I think the fees were a little higher, but you know what? Everyone has to make a living and that's the same as everybody else's fees too. So I just picked the first person I was with. As far as outstanding goes, this is where you really start to, to rise above the rest of people. You have unwavering integrity and honesty. You're taking continued continue education, but also taking some professional development courses as well to sharpen the skills. You have listing presentations that include, you know, valuable tools for the client. You have some good backend systems in place. You have impeccable time management skills. You're adding lots of value to clients. Um, you're learning how to control your life in terms of managing your business and your personal life. You always put the client first. You may start to have staff or a team relationship to help you. You're leveraging your efforts through other people. And your business is now primarily referral based, but you could also have a good lead generation engine happening as well. So this is that sort of level of outstanding customer service. Your clients feel completely satisfied. You know, they feel like the fees were worth the service. And I would definitely refer John in the future. No question. Like I would absolutely refer this, but there's actually two more levels above this. And this is where I really want to focus today. The next level is called separation and separation that the, it changes to your clients feel like they would be crazy. I'd be stupid to do business with anybody else other than John. And if I looked at this, the outstanding section, the outstanding level, the big difference here is that they love the service you provide. But you know what? If you ever left the business, there's somebody else who I know. I have a cousin in the business. I have something else. I would go and use them. When it's separation, they're having heart palpitations being like, why are you leaving? You're the only person that can serve me. They're literally running from the competition. Um, they feel like there's only one professional in the entire market that can meet their needs. And you charge full price and your clients literally feel like they paid too little. And we're going to talk about how to get to this level in a second. And it's interesting because you can actually be at various levels with different clients. Sometimes we all know you drop the ball with some clients and they feel like they're only at that ordinary level, maybe unacceptable. And sometimes you have this special relationship with clients where you've reached a separation level. The last level that's possible is what we call summit. And the big difference between summit and separation is that you apply a separation level of service to not just your clients, but to everybody. And we'll talk about that in a second here. So to set up for separation, here's what you need to do. You need to protect your clients. You need to bring them up to speed. You need to empower them. You need to simplify, build value, and set expectations. So this is what this looks like. Protect. If you want to rise above everybody else, you need to first and foremost make sure that your clients are aware of the laws, representation issues, and things like that. Now, this it seems like a very, very basic level of uh, information, but I'll tell you one of the things. When you talk about confidentiality as a fiduciary duty, and you let them know that even they, whether they choose you or not, that you're going to hold their information fully confidential. If this person is a third-party referral, you're not going to be blabbing about their transaction to your friend. You're just you're tight-lipped. You hold your integrity to the highest level and the duty of confidentiality happens forever. They are fully protected and you are truly have that undivided loyalty of their needs um, above your own. 
The next thing that you're doing, which is super important, and Ninja talks about this at length, which is great, but you're bringing them up to speed. You, you bring up to speed them on, on absolutely everything. So what's the economic climate? How is that affecting their situation? What, how is the, the current climate? P, buyers right away, if they think, oh, we're going to go ahead and lowball them, somebody right away because, uh, you know, multiple offers, maybe we're putting a lower offer. If you have not educated them on how, how COVID has the results of the real estate market in the COVID environment, you're really setting your clients up for failure in a lot of cases, especially on the buyer side, um, where you, you can run into some massive issues. Um, or not massive issues, but unrealistic expectations. And they're trying to lowball and then they end up, you know, having to pay more than they thought they would. They're disappointed. They lose on a couple of houses. It's a big problem. Also on the bring up the speed section is, are there industry changes that they should be aware of? We were just talking about matrix here and pillar nine, the changes. Some people are saying that, oh my gosh, my clients are so upset because of the way the emails are coming through. Well, if you haven't brought your clients up to speed, on the changes and how that's out of your hands, of course they're gonna feel disappointed. You have an opportunity to set their expectations, which we'll talk about in a second here, but bring them up to speed on what is happening. So in your relationship with the client, make sure that you're protecting them and you're bringing them up to speed. In addition, you need to be empowering them. You need to be sitting down in advance and, and figuring out and educating them on, based on their situation, what are the tips, tricks, and strategies that they can use to maximize their success? What do they need to know that will help them in the future? Is it likely they're going to need a home inspector? Is it likely they're going to run into some situation with conditions? Um, David Anderson on our meeting a little while ago was talking about multiple offers and educating real and educating your clients, sellers and buyers on what will happen if there's a multiple offer and how sometimes another, you, you might have one offer, the client's house has been on the market for 120 days and you put an offer and all of a sudden out of the wind, uh, you know, out of the, um, from out of nowhere, another offer comes in. Your buyer feels like something malicious has happened, that someone's, that the selling realtor has been cheating them. But as a selling realtor, I have a second showing. I'm trying to call everybody else to solicit other offers. So this is almost an expected, um, environment in some cases or expected circumstance. But if you empower your clients by educating them the strategies you're going to use, it's really, really important. The next thing is simplify. You need to be providing your clients with an easy to follow process and then in your business develop support systems and resources to assist them are you emailing them to let them know the next steps in a transaction or are you calling them to touch base with them are you um, making sure that they understand what to expect as far as conditions go what information they need for mortgage brokers what information they need you know for lawyers when the lawyer is going to call them you're simplifying this so they know in advance about everything that's going to happen it's absolutely imperative that you're being super proactive about this and looking at your own business to say how can i make this more seamless for my clients to do business with me and to navigate their way through a transaction you can implement technology systems for that but you can just um systems are just a matter of getting repeatable trusted processes in place so it doesn't have to be technologically advanced but it just needs to be repeatable so that you're offering that consistent level of service and the last two that you want to do for that separation level of service you need to build value this is huge we did a survey of um, uh, 3,000 realtors and 2,000 of the general public when we were teaching customer service training course and we said in terms of real estate transaction what are the most important things they need number one was expertise the public said number two was value they need to know that they're getting what they paid for. And we see that constantly where people think real estate fees are too high. Well, I always ask the question of if you were paid based off the amount of value added to a transaction, how much would you be paid? I hear about people all the time. We recommended a home inspection. We put in this term that protected them. We did this. We did this. I mean, they saved tens of thousands of dollars in potential errors or proactive um, value and or I got them more money because of my marketing. That's all great and wonderful, and you should be paid every penny you're worth. Well, let me ask you this question. If you were paid based off the amount of value your clients believed that you offered, how much would you be paid? So, um, so that goes to the fact of we do a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So on this build value part, you need to make sure that you're educating clients on what you are doing in front and behind the scenes to help them succeed. 
Don't leave any stone unturned. Make sure that it's your job to communicate the value that you are offering and bringing to clients. How do they know about the stuff that they don't see? How do they know how you vetted your photographer, how you vetted your home inspection, the horrible experiences you've had in the past, and how you got down to this list of your top three or your top two or even the one that you recommend? It's so important. And the other question with building value is what do you do that nobody else does? What is your process? What is your system? And why did you develop it that way? And when clients understand that, they have a, a, a value perception of you that's so much higher than anybody else. And they actually start to believe that the fees that they're paying are worth it. It's absolutely um, it's so powerful and it's so important. If your client doesn't feel like they got the value, chances are you didn't communicate what you were doing for them. You didn't communicate what it took for your marketing, the way you position the property, the way you priced it, the way you did the marketing, the write-up, the photos of why it sold in 24 hours. And the client looks at you and be like, well, you did very little work. Well, you didn't tell them all the stuff that you've done in the, in, in the past to position it well to do that. And the last one as to create that summit level or that um, separate, separation level of service, set expectations. Help them understand the communication plan. When are you going to call them to give them feedback on showings? Are you going to call them once a week? Are you going to call them after every showing? Don't do that. Um, but make sure they understand that. So help them understand the communication plan. What, what, if you're an appointment, when are you going to call them back? Because you can't say, oh, I answer my phone call every time. Because what if you're in a listening appointment? Who do they call in the case of an emergency? What's the timeline we should expect for results? Especially in regards to sellers. Should this house sell in a week? Two weeks? 30 days, 60 days, 90 days? Or are you educating them that you're not sure when it's going to sell because markets change and we're going to adapt the listing. We're going to, um, you know, uh, review price and things like that. So we're managing expectations and also your fees. Um, what can they expect from your fees? And now the, the key here is that when you're managing and setting expectations, you need to make it a habit to under promise. Under promise. Tell them you're going to have their house up on the market in a week if you know that you can do it in three or four days. And then they feel like you've under promised. It's, you know, if you ever had a package coming from Wayfair or Amazon or anywhere you shipped it and it says the shipping is going to be, you know, two weeks and you get it in like, you know, less than a week or within five days and you're overjoyed. You're like, wow, like I thought this was going to take a lot longer and bang, it's here already. Like that's incredible. So you want to pre-plan ways to dramatically exceed those expectations. You know, people like, uh, trainers like Richard Robbins, they talk about creating that fabled service or an unexpected gift. You can make these little magical moments throughout the transaction by setting expectations at a reasonable level at the beginning and knowing that you can rise above and exceed those every single time. And if you do those, it's going to be outstanding. Now, that's at separation level. I just want to give a final word on the summit level because this is the highest level, but I talk about separation because it's so much different than the outstanding level. Well, now your person is just like, Lindsay is the go-to expert on everything real estate. I'm coming to him. I feel so secure. I feel like he understands my needs deeply. I feel like he's representing my needs to the highest level possible. Yes, some other people provide an outstanding level, but he has totally separated himself because of the way that he has protected me, makes me feel empowered me to be a better person throughout this transaction. But the highest level is the summit level. And this is where the majority of realtors fall down and they have a narrow sight. And this is tr a, a narrow insight in this. And this is truly where people have, um, where, where you can make your life super easy. And it's this. Achieving that summit level, the key is this. Provide everyone, not just your clients, with a separation level of service. So I'm talking about other realtors, vendors, lawyers, home inspectors, photography, etc., buyers and sellers who are not your own, everyone else in your life. And if you do this, people will clamor to do business with you. When you're making the realtor's life easy on the other side of the transaction, you never know what's going to happen in the future. You never know whether this person will, you know, be in an area that they don't service and, you know, you guys cross paths on a difficult situation in the future and they go out of their way to return the favor. Your vendors, your lawyers, like these, it's amazing what happens in life when you are trying to provide phenomenal service to everybody. And this is interesting. I talk about the sellers and buyers who are not your own, but you're not going to cross representation boundaries, but something simple like, I always, 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 when I'm at a home inspection, I leave a bottle of wine in a card 
thanking the seller for, um, for letting us come in and view their home for taking the time to let us come in and thanking them for having the home look all tidy and clean during showings, thanking them for their time. And it goes a huge difference because here's what happens. You never know who you're going to cross in life, where you're going to end up, where you're going to be, you know, um, you know, pursuing a different business venture, another opportunity that's going to come up. Sorry, lost my microphone. Um, you never know what's going to happen and what the future brings. And the beauty of a real estate, of a real estate business and any business where you have a huge network is you cross paths with people all the time. And I can't say enough about the power of making sure that you are treating everyone like an A client, everyone around you and opportunities like the one that I talked about where I did that deal with Ann Clark. And now my whole world of possibilities have opened up by, um, uh, being at CIR now. These opportunities come up. I know realtors who have opened up restaurant franchises, started oil companies with past clients of people that wanted to invest in them, that wanted to give them funding, that wanted them to, you know, even become friends and vacation together or anything else. You never know where this is going to lead. So think beyond the client. Think about everyone in your life, everybody within your business and figure out how you can rise above and you will end up at that summit level. Trust me, this will make your life easy. When you want everyone, where everyone in the world wants to start doing business with you because of the way you treat them. Absolutely imperative. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. <laughs> I've tried with this truncated thing. I went too long on that segment, but we're still on track for the overall time with the meeting. Um, we're going to leave you guys with a video taking you out here. And I hope you guys enjoyed a shorter, compact version of getting the same information. We're going to be back next week doing the same format and eventually have it where we are changing up our presenters as well. So that's it. All the best and doing a ton of business for the rest of the week. See you guys soon.